Hello friends, this video on relations and functions part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 9. So here our concept of equivalence class, the new term. Please pay little attention here. So what it says that if R is an equivalent relation on set A, then it decompose A into pairwise disjoint subsets. Please note disjoint subsets and all elements of subsets are related to one another under the relation and no elements of subset is related to any other element. What I mean to say is if you have a set A let's suppose which has some element A1, A2, A3, A4 and let's suppose A. Now if you find A cross A a light A cross A here what you will get? A1, A1 will be one set. If A1 will be 80, A1 comma 80. Then A1, A3 will be one element. Dot, 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 A1, A1. Correct? And then you will start with A2. If you are done with this, then you will start with A2. A2, A1. Then A2, A2. Dot, 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 A1. A1, A1. And then again you will start with Let's suppose a n, a n a one dot 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 a n a n. This is all going to be the element of a cross a. Now I told relation is nothing but a subset, a subset of this a cross a. Now the, now what I'm trying to say is equivalence class. The concept is the first thing for to get equivalence class. The first thing is the relation has to be equivalence relation. When I say equivalence relation, it has to be transitive, symmetric, reflexive. So if it is reflexive, transitive and symmetric, it is equivalence relation. In the equivalence relation, actually, it decomposes these values into n number of subsets. For example, this R, whatever you get, will be decomposed into n number of subsets if it is a equivalence relation and it decomposes in such a fashion that all the subsets which you get are disjoint sets that means if this is part of set 1 this won't be part of any other set so let's suppose this, this elements are part of set 1 let's suppose. so this won't be part of set 1 and the other elements this, this is part of set 2 so these will be part of set 2 they are all disjoint. For example, this element can't be part of multiple sets, subsets. So it will be part of only one subset. And that is how it decomposes. For example, I'll take one example of the height. When I say height of person is equal to height of person 2. So this kind of relationship we have seen was an equivalence relation. Correct? Because this is uh, reflexive, height of P1 is equal to height of P1. Symmetric also, if P1 is equal to P2, P2 is equal to P1. And transitive also because if P1 is equal to P2 and P2 is equal to P3, P1 is equal to P3. So we have seen this, that height of two person, if you compare with equal relation, this is equivalence relation. Now, if you see this, this is bunch of people living in a family, right? This is a bunch of people living in a family. And now on this, I'm we know that this is an equivalence relation. First thing is EQ relation. Yes. First step class. If it is an equivalence relation, second thing is it will decompose into pairwise disjoint sets. If you see this, height of this guy won't be equal to this thing. But height of these three are equal. Height of these three are equal and height of these three are equal. Now if you see this is nothing but by set 1, this is nothing but by set 2 and this is nothing but by set 3. Now what I observe here is all these sets are exclusive and they are disjoint. That is, for example, this guy is not part of two sets, it's part of only one set. Any guy if you take, this little kid is part of only set 3. They are only part of one set, so they are disjoint set and the equivalence relation holds true for all this. For example, if I am talking about set 1, 
equivalence relation holds true. In talking about this set, the equivalence relation holds true. In talking about this set, in this set also, the equivalence relation holds true. This is how example of equivalence class looks like. This is a real life example. We will give you some more mathematical example in the next slides. But this is how equivalence class is. First thing, equivalence relation should hold true. And then we divide those into pair of disjoint subsets. You see disjoint subset 1, disjoint subset 2 and 3. All are disjoint, this, there is no common element. And if you combine all this, you get the whole element. Correct? If you combine all this, you get the whole element. This is the whole element to combine. And the equivalence relation holds true for this set, this set, and this set. You see in this set, the heights are equal. This guy is equal to this, this guy, that is uh, uh, reflexive. This guy is equal to this guy, this lady, and this lady is equal to this guy, that is uh, symmetric. And height of 1 is equal to height of 2, height of 2 is equal to height of 3. This implies height of 1 is equal to height of 3. That is done. Similarly, in this case, also if you see girl A, B, and C, A is equal to A, height A is equal to height A, that is my uh, reflexive. A is equal to B, implies B is equal to A, that is symmetric. A is equal to B, B is equal to C, height, that implies height of A is equal to height of A, A is, height of A is equal to height of C, that implies transitive. So if you see, all these three are equivalence relation. So what I am saying is equivalence class are nothing but all these sets. Set 1 is equivalence class, set 2 is equivalence class and set 3 is a equivalence class. Correct? So what I have got is uh, the whole thing is now distributed into set 1 plus set 2 plus set 3 and all these sets are disjoint sets and this is nothing but total A. A is nothing but my set, the complete set, the complete set, all family members of Khandelwal family. Let's suppose. So those guys are part of set A, and this set is broken into set one, set two, set three. Now all the sets are mutually exclusive, and all the sets are holding equivalence relation true. Having understood one real example of equivalence class, let's take one mathematical example of equivalence class. Let n be the set of all natural numbers. Correct? n the set of all natural numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. n is nothing but my n. The natural number. And n m are members of this set. Now we define the equivalence relation between n and m. That is n and m live same remainder when divided by 5. This is the equivalence relation actually. So you take any two element and when you divide by 5, it should give same remainder. That is a relation. Equal relation actually if you see. Same remainder when divided by 5. Now if you observe, we can divide this, decompose this into a1, a2, a3 and equal remainder. Why? If you divide 1 by 5, how much you get? 1. So I'll say I'll, I'll just first write like this. This will give you 1. If you divide 2 by 5, what you'll get? 2. Remainder. 3 by 5, you get 3. 4 by 5, you get 4. 5 by 5, you get 0. 6 by 5, again you get 1. Let's put the 7 here. 7 by 5, you get 2. 8 divided by 5, you get 3. 9 by 5, you get 4. 10 by 5, you get 5. You see, it repeats like this. 1, 2, like this. So what we can do, we can bucket this into buckets where you see, a1 is nothing but all the number which leaves remainder 0 on days by 5. That is, I am taking 5, 10, 15, 20, this kind of numbers. Correct. a2 is nothing but Numbers which leaves remainder 1 divided by 5, that is 1, 6, and then we have 11, these kind of numbers are there, which leaves 1 when divided by 5. Again, a3, 
it leaves two. So I have two, then I have seven, then I have twelve and seventeen. Then I have a four, which leaves three when divided by five. So I have three. Then I have eight, thirteen, then I have eighteen. All these number leaves three when divided by five. And then I have a five, which leaves four when divided by five. So I have four. This gives four when divided by five. Then I have nine. Then I have fourteen. Then I have nineteen. Bye. So these, if you see, it has all the numbers: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. These are all the numbers plus. They are all mutually exclusive. They are disjoint sets. There is no element which is common to both the or any two sets. If one is here, it will not be in your set. If two is here, it will not be in your set. So what we have seen that the bigger set one to infinity is divided into five. Subsets, five disjoint subsets, correct? And if you see, there is no common element. If you take a uh, disjoint of even and even, also any two sets. If you take uh, these two even and even, and you try to find even intersection and even, you will get five, nothing, because there is no common element. Similarly, if you take even and even, also you will get nothing. You take even and you take even, you will get nothing. You take any two combination, and you will see that there is no common element. Also, if you see that these subsets hold equivalence relation. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.